Last night, the Mets used early power to grab the lead and won it in 10 innings without the aid of a base hit, 5 to 4. Will Venable's two run home run and a pinch RBI single from Jesus Guzman rallied San Diego from 4 1 down, forcing extra innings. Pull up a chair, never know what you're going to catch. It's Padres baseball from Petco. Petco Park in downtown San Diego and the image of Bell, the bull of the bullpen for the Padres. Let's hope he gets a chance to come in tonight as the New York Mets and San Diego Padres play game two of this three-game series under beautiful weather conditions. And good evening, everyone, with Mark Grant, Dick Henberg. Pleased you're with us. The Padres, a tough one last night. They showed some rally power, came from behind, 4-1, but lose it in 10. And the frustration, the Mets score run without the aid of a base hit in that 10th inning. And the one-run defeats have really been the difference between this being a, a really very good season for San Diego and one that's been somewhat disappointing. There are 10 games under 500, one-run game, 16 and 26. It would be nice to be to have a laugher tonight for a guy like Corey Lupke to go out there tonight and really get a lead and let him work his stuff because he's a guy that's just getting better and better these days. And Corey Lupke against the New York Mets, he pitched very well. How high is the ceiling? I think the sky is the limit because Corey's just getting better and better as he goes out there with each start. Locating the fastball, the breaking ball is sharp, and he has proven, Dick, that he can pitch against the good lineups in the National League and be successful. Well, here's the evidence of that. Lowest opponent's batting average by any rookie pitcher this year in the National League. Lukey, 201 is all he's allowed, both in the bullpen combined with his starts. The other part of Corey's success this year is the strikeout pitch. He has 99 strikeouts coming into the game tonight and only 93 innings. And against the Mets, had eight punch outs in five innings in New York. I think that Corey Lukey has the physique as he matures in his you know early life here as a player he's going to get better and stronger he's going to be a 200 plus inning type guy so he's a key find for the san diego pottery organization we're lucky to have him in the rotation it's an interesting matchup of southpaws tonight the same two that faced each other in new york last week jonathan niece he's 11 and 9 he uh, is from defiance ohio the same high school as chad billingsley of the la dodgers and Corey lupke another buckeye from ohio state he goes for his fifth win tonight for san diego and our pitching matchup is brought to you by discount tire where america saves on tires the 26 year old lupke Ready to hit the mound here at Petco. The Mets, the opposition tonight.
for Padre fans. New York Mets here. They had uh, a sizable audience cheering for them last night into 10 innings and a 5 4 win for New York. They are currently three games under 500. Corey Lipke, the Padre starting pitcher profile, is brought to you by your San Diego County Cadillac dealer. Stop in tonight for an attractive lease or purchase offer. There's that sparkling 201 batting average against the best of any rookie pitcher in the National League as he goes for his fifth win. He did not get the decision in New York. That game eventually won by the Padres. A tight 3 2 affair as Cameron Maven, a late home run and a base hit, scored two of the runs, and the Padres uh, were able to split the four game series. Darren Bolsley, the pitching coach, and uh, Bud Black. Sometimes you wish you had a mic between it. I wonder <laughs> Don't what you? they're talking about. Absolutely. That's good reality TV. A little chuckle there before first pitch. And here it comes. We're underway at Petco and a strike call to Angel Pagan. Pagan, switch hitter, nine game hitting streak. Batting 366 in the past nine games with a couple of home runs, both against the Padres, hitting left handed. 0 oh, and 2. The only fault in Lupke's five inning performance in New York was his wildness, and he admitted later he tried to get a little too cute. Popped up off first base. Guzman over to take a look, but it's out of play. You know, when I look at those numbers that we showed you on Corey Lupke, the one thing that really jumped out, how about hits to innings pitched? 66 hits and 93 in the third innings pitched? Hey, I would love to see this kid get the ball 35 times next year and see what happens. Two strikes to Pagan. High and away. In that game in New York, five innings, he allowed two runs on three hits. But as wild as cost him in the third inning, he hit Turner, walked right, and eventually they both scored on a two out double by Duda. He did not go. And eventually the game won 3 2 by the Padres with Chad Qualls getting the victory and he fell to save. Oh my goodness gracious. Right. If he hits that, it's a double. I got to agree with you for a change. <laughs> a sarcastic <laughs> double. Corey wanted the call. Two and two. And another. Foul down the right field side out of play. That has got to be one of the worst swings, non calls, that I have ever seen. Well, Todd Titchener saw it with a different eye. Yeah. Let's take one more look just for. Uh, Does the barrel of the bat go past home plate? Oh, it hit the Western Metal Building. <laughs> <laughs> and now the count is full. And with Corey Lukey out there, we see a lot of 0 2, 1 2 counts. Let's see if, if he gets to that situation tonight, if he could put these Met hitters away, keep the pitch count down. And he walks the leadoff man. That's how the trouble began in the 10th inning last night with Josh Spence walking the first two men he faced. And without a hit, the Mets won the game. The lineup tonight for New York brought to you by the Prize Patrol, presented by Jerome's Furniture. Text winning. To 269411 to enter. Pagan Turner right due to the cleanup spot, then Bay and Hairston. Polino behind the plate to hot of the shortstop and Nice on the mound. Turner a 265 average. And another ball out of the strike zone. Mets a happier lot after breaking their five game losing streak with a win last night. That's a strike. They've won only four of their last 15, and three of those four wins were those late inning wins against the Padres for Terry Collins. Check swing foul. Lukey, especially tough against left handed batters. He's only allowed a 152 average. And right, he's hitting but 226. But all six home runs that he's given up have been to right handed hitters. It doesn't matter for Larry Corey Lukey if it's a righty or a lefty. He is pounding the strike zone and pitching with severe confidence and conviction out there. It's good to see. 
And, and once again, like any pitcher, how, how do you bounce back? Well, Aaron Harang, after giving up the home runs last night, after the home run to Duda, strike out, but the walk hurt him, and then the two run shot. But bang, bang, got two outs to get out of that second inning. Infield looking for a ground ball. Lyle over Bay released by the Pirates picked out by the Diamondbacks knocked in all three runs tonight and Arizona beat the Phil 3 2 in the ninth inning. It's funny how it works out huh. Mm -hmm. Arizona having a marvelous year the runner goes and the pitch is hit high and deep to center field. Maven going back and he has just enough room in deep center. Uh, 390 foot out off the bat of Turner. Here's the Padre defense tonight around the horn. Forsyth Gonzalez giving uh, Hartlett a night off. Hudson and Guzman, blanks and left, Maven in center. And Cunningham moves over to right field this evening. Huntley behind the plate. And Lopke on the mound. Turner put a good charge into that last one. Under it just a little bit. Wright had a deep drive to center field last night for an out. Change up misses ball one. You, know, you think that Justin Turner being in the number two hole being the youngster that he is to have a guy like David Wright on deck you're going to get some good pitches to hit. Pagan was going on the ball. That Turner struck. He has. The club lead in stolen bases 24. Good run on that fastball, and that's what they say about Corey stuff that a lot of late action. Mm -hmm. He really gets extended. He has good arm speed, gets good rotation on that pitch, has a little bit of extra giddy up on it. So it makes that slider down and into the right. He's so effective as well. That one hangs outside. Curveball. So two and one to David Wright with Lucas Duda, the cleanup hitter on deck. Duda eating up Padre pitching in the five games that they played. Three and one. Pretty good pitch. Just missing down. When Corey is missing, he is missing down out of the zone. That's where you want to miss. Not much David Wright or any hitter can do with that type of pitch. Now, if you miss around the belt, it's a different story. And he walks right. So Pagan opens the game with a walk. Turner with a deep out to center. Right walk. So the table set for Lucas Duda. Sometimes Corey Lukey has a tendency to work too quickly. I'm not saying he's working too quickly here, but trying to be too fine. Might be a little calm down session for Darren Balsley talking to the young lefty. And sometimes. This might be one of the things that Darren's talking to him about. Remember, he works so quickly sometimes, sometimes his attention draws away from that runner at second base, and bang, they can time him and steal third. So he has to be really aware of that and slow his game down a little bit with runners on. Now, both these men are base stealers. Wright doesn't try as often, but he has nine. And Pagan out at second base, as we said, 24. Duda in the five games against the Padres played this year is 10 for 20. Former Southern California Trojan. With a home run and five runs batted in including a two run single in New York that won one of those comeback affairs. His home run last night got the Mets started in the second inning. He also had a couple of singles three for five. His home run was way back, 435 into the right field bleachers. That one sliced to left, charging at his blanks. He hit that ball well. Two gone. Get Ike Davis back off the injury list and we move Duda to the outfield. He good looking bat. Yeah, he uses the whole field. He has shown that in New York and also that first game last night. Jason Bay 
There are his numbers with nine home runs. Nine tops the Mets club. He and David Wright both with nine. Interesting. The Padres now their leading home run hitter is Maven, the seventh. Oh, Pagan had a big jump off second. Mm -hmm. Got to be careful there. And you know what, Dick? You might be thinking right along with Nick Hundley. He's going out there saying, hey, come on now. You've got to keep an eye on that guy in second base. This is a big out, no question, with the runner in scoring position. If you don't want to move that guy up to third base. And give uh, right second base now mm -hmm. a single scores two. That's in there. 0 and 2. Slider perfectly uh, placed in under the hands. If he can get that release point down against the right handed hitters with that slider, it's going to be a good night for Corey Lukey. Got him. 92 right on the fist. And that's the story for the Mets in the first inning. No runs, no hits, a couple of walks, but they're left on base. Padres come up in the first with Maven, Forsyth, and Guzman. Twenty four. Good size. Six four two seventeen. Nearly pitched a perfect game against the Padres last year a one hitter. Kristen Orfeo with a double in the third inning and that's all the Padres got. Maven takes a strike. Draws in right at third with a bluff bunt. But right makes that play as well as anyone in the majors. The charge and bare hand. We saw him do it again last night. Oh, cuteness sighting. Shop foul by Maben, who leads the club and runs and hits and home runs and steals. He's Mr. Everything. Huh? And and I think he's just going to get better and better. And defensive gems. No question. I think he has found a nice home here in San Diego, and hopefully it's for a long time. Off his fist foul. Where's his age on his back? Willie Mays number. So his future is all ahead and uh, he has been everything the Padres hoped he would be as a regular. A bouncer a curveball one and two. You know he's already shown the fastball in to Cameron Maven. His fastball is going to top out about 92. Curveball cutter and a change. He's a homegrown Met. Had a lot of success in the minor leagues. 
drafted uh, six years ago in the seventh round. Was an all-state soccer player in Ohio. And followed Chad Billingsley at the same Defiance Ohio High School. Another ball in the dirt, and the count goes full to Maven. First time he's been on the mound here at Petco. You know what I like about the soccer nugget that you just gave? That tells me that you've got to be a good athlete on your feet, and that's always good for any, you know, basketball, football, baseball. But you know, as a pitcher, being nimble on that mound, I'll bet you he's a darn good fielder of his position as well. That's a good point. Ground ball up the middle, and Pagan is there, or rather uh, Tejada, and he's able to throw out Maven 6-3. Padres starting lineup for Bud Black tonight brought to you by Evans Tire and Service Centers home of the free alignment Maven and then Forsyth hitting second tonight Guzman back into the starting lineup they missed him for a couple of games got the RBI base hit off the bench last night Kyle Blanks cleanup then Hudson Hundley Cunningham hit seventh Gonzalez in the eighth spot and Lupke. Another ball in the dirt. I. I don't think I'm going on a limb and saying this, but I, I just every time I see Logan Force, I, I think this guy is going to turn into a player. I think he's going to have quite a career. I just like everything I see about him. He kind of flies under the radar. He's not flashy. That ball hit well to right center field. Pagan and racing toward the wall. That's way out there, and he can't get it. Bounces over the fence. Ground roll double. That would have been a triple had it stayed in the ballpark. Pagan, as we mentioned last night, and in New York, plays a very shallow center field, and it's cost him a couple of times in New York. Last night, on one occasion, when Forsyth doubled, and here's another. Dick, I'm going to go out on another limb and say this. Where he is playing, and he's got a long run to go, if this ball stays in, with the way Logan Forsyth hustles, you know what? He may have flirted with it inside the park, Homer, because he was out. He had the Jets going. This guy hustles out of the box. It's just another reason why I like this kid so much. Hey, his whole game. You know, he's not one of these flashy guys. In the short time that we have seen him, he's pretty solid. Ball bounced into the sandbox out there over the 400-foot sign. Here's Guzman. Good opposite field power. Curveball in there, and it's 0-2. Guzman, since the All-Star break, hitting 378 with four homers and 27 of those 31 RBIs. Struck him out. Never got his bat off his shoulder. As a Wernie would say, he stood there like a house at the side of the road. Defense brought to you by North County GMC, a Southern California tradition for over 20 years. Bryden, Tejada, Turner, and Duda. Dave Pagan and Hairston in the outfield. Scott Hairston moving from left to right tonight. Polino behind the plate. Thank goodness they don't have uh, Josh Toley in there. And Nice on the mound. So two outs. Well, Kyle Blanks takes a curveball strike. Blanks with an RBI double last night. He's moved his average up to 250. After a miserable start, three for 32, hitting well over 300. Fastball tails away. Since the three for 32 start. Blanks is hitting 361 with three homers all on the last road trip. Nine runs batted in. Goes around. Looks like Ronnie Paulino, the catcher for the New York Mets, giving it a different set of signs, two sets of signs. He's doing the touch, you know, right leg, left leg, chest protector mask there. And then he'll give a series of signs with the runner on second base. That might be a decoy. You never know. One might be hot, one might be not. Round ball toward the hole. Wright has a long throw, and he doesn't get him. Duda unable to come up with it cleanly. I don't know whether Blanks would have been called out had it been a good throw. Tough play by Wright, and it's an infield hit for Blanks. 
So first and third here in the first inning. One, two, three hopper. It looks like Wright kind of backed up on that baseball and then had to throw on the run. And the jury will be out for a long time, whether Blanks would have been out or safe. If he catches that, it would have been very, very close. And a break for San Diego. And for first base umpire Todd Titchener, he wasn't mm -hmm. going to be right yep. no matter how he called <laughs> that one. So first and third for Orlando Hudson. Hudson with 30 runs batted in, a chance to give the Padres the early lead. He's hitting from the stronger side, that right side, and takes ball one. Two seventy three right handed with all three of his home runs on the outside corner. Well they've got stats for everything we know that and one of those stats is for Nice that with two outs is holding opponents to a one seventy nine batting average. He's looking at two outs here and runners at the corners. Ahead on the count one and two now to Hudson. And with runners in scoring position and two outs, he's holding hitters to 155 average. So it's even better average for Nice with runners in scoring position and two outs. Ground ball right side. That's true. And the Padres score on Hudson's RBI single. Four side hits home plate. It's 1 0 San Diego. RBI number 31 for the O-Dog. Good approach by Orlando Hudson. Lefty on righty. That pitch is up. It's away. He doesn't try to get froggy and pull it into the gap. Let's the ball travel just a little bit more. Just out of the reach of Justin Turner. And what do you know? The Padres put a point up there in the bottom of the first. Nicely done. A little two-out rally going here. And chance for more. Here's Hundley. A line drive center field. That's a base hit. Here comes Blanks around third. The throw is way offline. It's 2 nothing. And the ball gets away, but Hudson, for some reason, didn't go to third base. He was halfway there, went back, was halfway again, and still didn't uh, advance. Nevertheless, Hundley delivers. Single to center field, and it's a 2 nothing lead. Four base hits. With four size double the igniter. Nick Hulley being aggressive. First pitch fights off some type of cutter maybe on the inner half. And I'll tell you what, with Kyle Blanks rounding third base, I'll bet you a dime to donuts that Ronnie Paulino thinking, please have this throw be offline. I don't want to have number 88 come railing into me. In the meantime, Hudson. For some reason, didn't advance to third base. You know what I was thinking, and I can't speak for Orlando, but with the way the ball bounced and from his vantage point, I don't know his depth perception. If he knew how far back the ball went, I'm not making an excuse for Orlando. I'm just saying that may have been one of the things in his mind. And rather to chance it, he says, you know what? Chances are I'm probably going to score on a base hit anyway. Could have been one of the things he was thinking. Yeah, yeah, the old unwritten baseball rule, you can't make that right. last out at third base. So first and second for Cunningham with two runs in. First pitch strike, a fastball. Double by Forsyth, and then three consecutive two out singles by Blanks, Hudson, and Hundley. The Padres in front, two nothing. That one tails away. No, fastball. I'm just glad that. Corey Lupke got out of that little mess in the first inning, put a zero up there, and the Padres putting a crooked number up there in the bottom of the first for the young left hander. Slow curveball in there. One and two. Good arm speed, good rotation on that yacker from Nice. That's in at second. Hudley at first with RBI. Base hits. And Corey Lupke. Uh, Pondering what's ahead in the second inning. Chop foul by Cunningham. Lots of pitches for Nice here in the opening inning. 26 already. Well, Atlanta beats 
San Francisco in extra innings. Two to one. Arizona wins a one run game at Philadelphia. Big win for the Diamondbacks to go against the winningest team in baseball. Their home park and beat the Phils. A lot of things are going right right now for those Diamondbacks. That one skips away but not far enough for. Hudson to race to third. And the count goes two and two to Cunningham. And speaking of other teams in the division how about the Giants kind of facing some challenges. Sergio Romo. On the DL. Brian Wilson kind of you know gave it up a little bit. And with Arizona winning tonight and the Giants losing D backs lead by three and a half. Here in the West. Full count to Cunningham. So two away. Huntley at first and Hudson at second will be off with the next delivery. Low curve is fouled away. And that takes Nice uh, to his 30th pitch of this opening inning. Won nine games last year as a rookie, nine and ten, and led all rookie pitchers in strikeouts in the National League. Ground ball up the middle. Can it get through? Nope, and a nice play made by Turner, the second baseman, to range behind the bag and deny the Padres perhaps still a third run. But a good first inning for San Diego. Two runs on four hits, two left. Two nothing, Padres. Twelve. Why don't you uh, consider becoming a Padre season ticket holder? And if you do so before August 26, you'll receive five complimentary tickets to games this year. So you can check out the seats here at Petco. Find the ones you enjoy most. They're all price ranges. You can be a season ticket holder and mm -hmm. have a partial plan for just a little over hundred dollars. So don't miss out on all the benefits of being a Padre season ticket holder. Call 619-795-5555. Tell them you're in. Corey Lipke, that one not in uh, as Scott Hairston leads it off for the Mets here in the second inning. His ground ball with the infield drawn in was just wide enough for shortstop to get in the winning run last night. High, high pop up, way up there. Hudson waiting for it to come down. Brings up Ronnie Polino. Interesting tonight. Uh, 
Scott Hairston is in right field for the Mets. Aaron Cunningham is in right field for the Padres. Mm -hmm. They came here to San Diego in the same trade right. that sent Kuzminov, Kevin Kuzminov, to Oakland. Polino takes a strike. Well, the world of baseball ever changing. Ground ball nicely handled by Lukey. Broken bat, distraction of that. Ball hit just out in front of him on the mound. And you know, Corey Lukey made that look easy. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of pitchers will be fooled by the swing. It's a big old swing, but the ball comes off the bat as if it's a changeup. Actually, that ball had a little fuzz on it as a, after a second look, especially after broken shillelagh, but calm, cool, collected. Good athlete, Corey Lukey, making it look easy. You're talking to Darren Bolsley around the batting cage as the pitchers took hitting practice tonight. And he made an interesting comment about it. He said, you know, this entire pitching staff is very athletic. They are. He said, watch him in the outfield during uh, batting mm -hmm. practice and how they just play balls off the bat. In particular, he mentioned Matt Latos. Mm -hmm. He said, but he could really defensively play the outfield. I'll bet you you can put the pitching staff on the hardwood and they'd have a darn good basketball team. I'll bet you you can put them in a flag football game. Hey, what the heck? Put some pads on them and they'd have a pretty good <laughs> football team. So to, to make your point, you're absolutely right. They could do a lot of things really well in the athletic world, I'll bet. Here's a good young athlete, just 21, Ruben Tejada, the shortstop. And a strike for two and one. Filling in for Jose Reyes, the National League's leading hitter who's on the DL. Eligible to come off today, but that hamstring is still bothering him. Two and two. Hey, let's face it, timing's everything, right? And the, the more that he can stay away, keep him out of the game against the Padres, right? It's part of the game. Guys get hurt, get put on the shelf. Two and two. Late swing. Well, the Padres without Dustin Mosley and Clayton Richard. Chase Headley, their top hitter. Dustin so, Norfi has started a rehab assignment in Tucson. Today was haircut day down in the uh, off the clubhouse. Mm, what was wrong with that one? Looked like inside and looked like uh, Clayton Richard got tightened up a little bit. You know, Dustin Mosley was getting a haircut, and this one it tries to shave the inside part of the plate. That's a strike, Dick Enberg. I thought it was initially. Happy haircut to Clayton Richard. <laughs> three and two. And Tejada with a two out walk. That's three walks for Lubke. That pushes his pitch count to 33. Working down, if you're going to miss, that's where you want to miss. And according to the Carl's Jr. pitch track, Happy Star is smiling, but Corey Lukey is not. Big league pitchers, that's where they want to throw it. They yep. should be rewarded. Absolutely. Nice is three for 45. Strike one. After that walk would be nice to have Lukey put away Nice. One, two, three. Two strikes the count. And that's it. One, two, three. And Nice is gone. Uno Second dos. Adios. Nicely done, Mr. Ember. <laughs> Boy, you're teaching me so many good things. <laughs> Padres lead at two nothing after one and a half.
Padres with four hits in that first inning off Jonathan Nice and first pitch swinging is Alberto Gonzalez. High fly to shallow right center for Pagan. One away. Well, fans get to the ballpark early Sunday. Be part of history. Trevor Hoffman retirement ceremony number 51 will be retired as the San Diego Padres salute the all time great sage leader in a pregame retirement ceremony recommended that you be in your seats by 1230 Sunday. Hope you've received your tickets. There are some left Padres.com slash Trevor has been a real pickup in sales the last mm -hmm. couple of days. Could be a huge crowd on Sunday. Luke Keefe. Behind on the count, two strikes. I'll tell you, that is one event I'm really looking forward to, and I know a lot of Padre fans as well. Lukey goes down on three pitches. That's the second strikeout for Nice. Well, the Padres defeated the Cubs 4 3. One of the milestone saves of Trevor Hoffman. 321st save with the Padres. Saved it for Bobby Jones, a major league record at the time. For most saves with one team as he passed Oakland's Dennis Eckersley, number 321. Bases empty, two gone here in the second. Maven grounded to short his first time. Grounded sharply. Look at that right. Raises and does he get him? Yes, he does. Oh, he is fantastic. David Wright in those six games now we've seen him. Give him the gold glove. Why have a vote? Give it to him. He is brilliant. Look at this. That's a double. And it gets up in time, and Maven, with all his speed, still couldn't beat the throw. Unbelievable. the order Pagan then Turner and Wright for the Mets 2 nothing Padres Corey Lupke looking for his fifth win of the year stake to the early advantage Pagan walked his first time three base runners so far for the Mets all on walks ground ball foul It's all in the ear, huh? It's almost like a, a tuning fork. Yeah. You see him bouncing that knob on the ground to see if that bat was broke. In. Broken. Broken. Yeah. That's right. You got to see if it's broken. Okay. Gotcha. I'm gonna write that one down. <laughs> you know, I don't want to butcher the Queen's English. So. No, you don't. I just, I know, I, I jumped in there. You were gonna or is say. It the King's and, English. King or Queen? I think it's the Dukes. <laughs> well, for me, it's the Dukes of Hazard when it comes to the English language. Foul pop up at the dugout and it goes off the roof of the dugout. You heard the 
Min and Buddy Black was up there and Rick Renteria. No, no, no. Don't uh, go skipping down these steps and injure yourself. A little help from your teammates here and coaching staff. Hey, you get down on those steps, you can get a little slippery. Rick Renteria is right there to help his catcher. Nice wingman in Rick Renteria. Two and two to Pagan. John's eyes. Very intense, huh? You're casting him in Hollywood. What's his role? Sven Gali? He could be a ooh, somebody he could be a he could be a madman. <laughs> and he is one now as he takes strike three. Third strikeout. For Corey Lukey. Definitely he, guessing on this one, Dick, as we take a look. Oh, you talk about Lukey threading the needle there. Nicely done by the young left-hander. He's been on a strikeout rampage two games ago in Pittsburgh. Seven innings, he struck out nine. And in just five innings, fanned eight in New York. Back Turner off the plate. Turner sent Cameron Maven to the warning path at the 396 mark to grab his long fly ball in the first inning. This one punched to the right side. Hudson on the outfield grass to throw him out. Brings up David Wright. I mean, he has made such a variety, right, of outstanding plays at third base. Diving to the right, diving to the left, charging in, racing into foul territory and giving it up to go airborne to catch a ball. I mean he he's a been a third base clinic mm -hmm. watching this man. And then he hits this ball foul down into the bullpen area of the Mets. Here's that play again. Instinct gets up and almost in one motion able to get that throw in. There's no faster runner than Maven mm -hmm. going up that line. And credit Duda over there at first base also with the pick out of the hand. It looked like David Wright was like oh no I short hopped him. And then his first baseman picks him up. But you know, as outfielders, we talk about range, right? Going back on the ball, coming in on the ball, right and left. Well, shorter reaction time for a third baseman, but David Wright has all the quadrants covered. Yeah, you watch enough games as we do all season long, and that ball's a base hit mm -hmm. against the great majority of third basemen. He got him. Breaking ball freezes right a good slider a couple of strikeouts for Lukey in the third as the Mets go in order home half of the third it'll be Forsyth Guzman and blanks for the Padres.
Cars of San Diego County. Stop by, test drive the all-new redesigned 2012 Civic, and check out the latest offers on the full lineup of Hondas. Last of the third, Padres with a 2-0 lead. Nice works to Forsyth, who doubled the deep right center field to start the go-round in the opening inning. Blanks followed with an infield hit, and then Hudson and Hundley with RBI singles for the 2-0 lead. One and one. Yeah, Forsyth now is over the 100 at bat mark. So, you know, this is basically a, mm -hmm. one of the lines you draw on the season. One hopper. Oh, right can't get that one as that one shoots into left field. And Forsyth, following the praise of my partner, Mark Grant, is a solid two for two. You know, sooner got it out of your mouth. There's good feeling about how he's going to be a solid player for a long time, and he has delivered. He's got a short, compact swing. He has shown power to the opposite field. He fought off a pitch on the inner part of the plate. Look where this pitch is. Nice tries to bury it inside. He gets some serious top hand on it, and even David Wright cannot get to it. And the Memphis Chickasaw comes through with another base hit. Hey, Graceland's in Memphis, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Today's the anniversary of the passing of the king of rock and roll. He Elvis. died? Elvis. He died? 1977. Guzman so, took a third strike his first time. So Logan Forsyth has a uh, niece all shook up tonight. Oh, yeah. I, the, the old hound dog, you come up with that mm -hmm. stuff. And you're wearing those, you know what? Loose suede, yeah. Picks up your uh, nice deep blue shirt you're wearing. Thank you. Nice combo uh, yourself there, Professor. Yeah, yeah, we're the kind of the colors that bring out my feminine side. <laughs> <laughs> Two and one. Guzman. What a rich acquisition he has become. Let's see if he can make an adjustment after his first at bat. He was definitely guessing. He was caught looking at a fastball away. He's been pounding that pitch to right field. Mm -hmm. Slow curveball hit the left field. It's dying in a hurry. That's a base hit. Not hit well, but he finds the grass as he dumps a base hit to left field and Forsyth moves to second. Started hitting tonight at 344. He's now hit safely in 14 out of 15 games. Stayed back just enough on that breaking ball and went down and got it off the end of the bat. You know, the, the leg, all, all the uh, the weight was on that front foot, but he kept his hands back just a little bit. Just enough, I should say. To deaden that ball off the end of the bat. For the base hit. Lang's first ball hunting. That's a high fly ball curling into the bullpen area and a nice play. No, he dropped the ball. That's foul ball, good. so no advancement as right fielder Scott Hairston. And of course, that's a tough area. You're going up the little hill of the mound, and it's not a flat grade, and uh, that may have tossed him off course. Yeah, that's a very catchable ball for Scott. And he'll be charged with an error. He wasn't camped, but he definitely had his glove by his face there, indicating that he was underneath it. For the easy grab. Hey, even the good ones mess it up sometimes. That's that's a break from San Diego Padres. You bet. An extra out for Blanks and the Padres. Two on, no one. And this one is hit the right center field and a long run for Pagan. And he makes the catch. And that one wasn't exactly clean. Looked like that rolled up into the heel of the glove. No, the big horse, number 88, Kyle Blanks, putting a good swing on it. And the big guy trying to drive it the opposite way. A good sign, like Logan Forsythe. Yeah, that ball looked like it maybe hit in the heel a little bit and then rolled up into the webbing of the glove of Pagan. For the first out. Hey, and, you know, it's give and take. You, you mentioned he, he plays shallow, right, in center field. If he's playing a little deeper, that ball might have a chance to get in there. And that's, that, right. and that's the give and take of playing shallow. He's, ba he's banking on taking away the, the little dunkers and then giving up the ball over his head. That's an excellent point. I mean, the Padres have the fewest number of home runs in the National League, so it's a calculated mm -hmm. risk. But they're not going to hit the ball deep. Hudson grounded an RBI single to right field his first time. 
And the count in his favor 2 and 0. Oh. The niece has given up six base hits in the first three innings. Forsyth from second, Guzman at first. 3 and 0. Oh. On the inside corner. Well, the next pitch for Nice will be number 50. You know, when he goes on holiday in Europe, he goes to France. He likes to visit Nice. <laughs> okay, I got you. I knew where you were going as soon as you said Europe. Three and one. Fouled into the glove. Polino, a slider. So full count now to Hudson. Runners lead from first and second, one gone. Up the middle, right at the bag, and that takes the shortstop Tejada to the bag for a 6 3 double play. Well, you couldn't have aimed that better at the right speed for Tejada to field and in the same motion hit the bag and complete a 6 3 twin killing. Top of the fourth inning, 2 0 San Diego. Time for tonight's trivia question brought to you by ATT Wireless. The question What two teams played each other in the first major league game outside the U.S. or Canada? What two teams were involved mm. in the only time uh, or the first time a game played in the regular season outside the U.S. of A and Canada? Ooh, oh, first pitch is right into the back of Duda. And the leadoff man on. The fourth base runner for the Mets, three walks and a hit batsman. And this is the last thing that Corey Lupke wants to do with a 2 0 lead to lead off the fourth inning. Put a base runner on, just a ball that gets away. Sometimes that will happen. You work underneath the baseball, maybe try to overthrow it. Jason Bay struck out his first at bat with a couple men on. Pagan and Wright had walked with one away. Slider on the outside corner. 200 home runs for Jason Bay. He hit his 200th in New York against the Padres last week. Hit only one as a Padres. He came up to the big leagues 
with San Diego. Do you remember when they first came up? I do remember when Jason Bay came up, and there was a lot of hype about this young kid at the time, and I liked what I saw, and a lot of other teams liked what they saw as well. That's why he was involved in some trades along the way. Didn't do quite as well that he'd, he'd like in Boston, but uh, he's quite a talent and a good kid. Runs well. One and two. Pride and joy of Trail BC. Western Canada. Canada producing some terrific baseball talent more and more. How about Joey Votto in Cincinnati? Mm -hmm. Is he any good? And the one guy that comes to mind for me is uh, Larry Walker. Yeah, great left handed hitter. Ferguson Jenkins yeah. on the mound. So from 0 and 2, they works the count even. Two balls, two strikes. Lead off man Duda at first base. Full count. And yeah, and since we're on the subject of uh, baseball players from Canada, we've got to get a, a little, little love out there for our good friend Matt Stairs, who retired oh, this yes, year. What absolutely. A, what a great guy. Uh, just a pleasure to be around when he was a Padre, calling it quits after a, a long career for Matty. What was he, 43, 44 mm -hmm. years of age? The all time home run hitter is a pinch hitter. Fly ball to right, routine. Cunningham. One away. Scott Hairston steps up. It's a nice adjustment for Corey after hitting Duda. Making Jason Bay hit a pitch. Scotty last year with the Padres. Hit just 210 in 210. <laughs> Had a 10 home runs. He's been solid for the Mets. He's a spot outfielder, but also as a pinch hitter this year. He's got eight pinch hits, three of them home runs. Home run swing there at a changeup. That is the pitch that's really going to elevate Corey Luking's game. The curveball and the changeup. The arm speed is the same. You can see it kind of really works on top of that changeup, kind of rolls it over a little bit. Getting that action down and away to the right handed hitters. Fastball in here. Yeah. And in the strike zone, one and two. Two quality pitches back to back. Good seat, no matter where you are at Petco. It's a different game depending on where you want to locate yourself. Tried to get him to bite on the slider inside. I remember as a kid going to Old Comiskey Park, Dick, and going to the worst. I mean, there's no bad seat, right? But going way up in the upper deck and just getting as far, and it's still a great seat. Oh, yes. The sounds of the game. The ball's big enough that yeah. you're, you know, you're never too far from the action to see it. And, yeah, when you're in. I like those two for one seats tonight. You, mm -hmm. You're playing the outfield at Petco. Absolutely. Lots of folks in that upper tier in right field. Taking advantage of the two for one. Here they are enjoying a big league ball game and making new friends. Nice play by Forsythe, and then on the exchange, a Paulie out on Duda, but Hudson lost the ball on the exchange. My bad, he says. That was a double play. And a nice piece of glove work by your man Logan Forsythe, the third. That's why they call it the high corner. Right down that cliche as well, folks, but I like everything about Logan Forsythe. Hey, we've talked about David Wright, and Logan makes a heck of a play. The snatch and the P rod over to second base and ladies and gentlemen mark it down August 16th at 8.05 p.m. Dick Enberg said my bad <laughs> referring to Orlando Hudson I was really second really lip reading no I know and no. I like it I like it a lot <laughs> <laughs> no you're not going to catch me saying that socially and here it is my bad dog yeah it's, it's all good my bad <laughs> 
So two out. Polino, the catcher, he rips one into right field for the first Mets hit of the night. So three and two-thirds innings of hitless ball from Corey Lukey, who only gave up three hits in uh, in New York in his last outing. Hey, at least they got that out, that lead runner, right? Getting Scott Hairston. You never know what was going to happen if that ball is struck to right field. So now the Mets have to come up with another two out hit to possibly score a run. Tejada walked his only time. He's the heir apparent to that shortstop job in New York. Reyes will be a free agent eligible next uh, year. And of course, a highly sought product. Mm -hmm. He's a terrific player, all star player. And the Mets have indicated they're not, they don't have the money to re sign him. One strike pitch. Luke ahead, 0 and 2. So this young 21 year old Panamanian. From what we've seen, he certainly can field it. Yep. And the question is, can he hit? His average is 254. Got 22 runs batted in. And if he can hover around there, that's quite all right. 250, 260. If you can get to it and pick it. He reminds me of Everett Cabrera in a way. His abilities, skills. And if Cabrera. We're hitting 254 in the big league level. He'd be playing shortstop tonight for San Diego. He's been injured down in Tucson. Two on, two out, and two strikes on Tejada. How does he lay off that pitch? Oh. That's one of the pitches that really doesn't get called a strike. The one up and away. What is Carl's Jr. pitch check? It says it's a ball. But you're right, Dick. That yeah. is a tough pitch to lay off. And he checked his swing. Mm -hmm. One and two. Troubled spot here for Lupke and the Padres in the top of the fourth inning. They threaten two on, two out. And the other thing I've noticed and like a lot about Corey Lupke is when he has dealt some adversity. Now this is a little bit of a jam here. Two outs. Runner in scoring position. And he's got to make a good pitch here. He's got to bear down. He has just proven I think that nothing really. I guess the bottom line is he's not scared. This guy is not scared to go after hitters. Even runners in scoring position with his stuff. Yeah, and fastball. Ball. Fastball there challenging him and Tejada cannot catch up to it. And he spoils another pitch in the. Number of tosses by Lupke is mounting 66. And we're just in the fourth inning. In part to the fact that he's walked three. And he's hit one. Two and two. Maven shallow in right center field. That's a huge gap in left center. That angle, tough to see how wide a gap that is between the left fielder and center fielder. Pulled, hits oh. the bag. Fair ball, run will score. On a double by Tejada and pulling up at third is Paulino. It's two to one. Well, Tejada perfectly measures that pulled ground ball right to the bag at third base for a base hit. My goodness. You know, it's been interesting to see if that ball gets by. Logan Forsythe had a beat on that diving. To his right and a break for the New York Mets. Don't shut your toolbox here, Corey Lupke. Now two runners in scoring position. And the pitcher Nice with a chance to really help himself.
He has only four career RBIs. And struck out on three pitches his first time. He has three hits and 46 at bats. But if you've got uh, a bat in your hand and you close your eyes and swing, you could, you're dangerous. One and one. So the hit batsman to lead off this inning becomes a run. Barrels that one in there. One and two. Keeping the fastball away. And the defense playing accordingly. Kyle Blanks really shaded over towards the left field line. In the event of a lazy fly ball that way. 25th pitch of the inning. And he misses again. Two and two. Well, this is very similar to how it Things went in New York for Lukey. Trouble finding the strike zone. And now a full count to Nice with Pagan on deck. And that will get a manager uh, pacing. No defense for the base on balls. There's Darren um, Ballsley. And he spoils that one. 93 got a bat on it. Corey's got to go to his strength where he knows he can throw a strike and prevent preventing having to pitch to Pagan on deck with the bases loaded. Struck him out. That swing foul tip and Hundley hangs on. And that's it for the Mets in the fourth, but they score their first run on a couple of hits and leave two in scoring position. Answer. Two teams played the first major league game outside the U.S. or Canada. And do you remember who they were? The answer these two, the Mets and the Padres, August 16th, this date in 1996. The first ever game played south of the border in Mexico in Monterey, 15 to 10. Padres outslugged the Mets. That's a home run by Ken Caminetti, part of the Padre win 15 10, and Trevor Hoffman. Involved in that as well. Talking about expansion of the major leagues. As Hundley leads off here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Hundley with an RBI single to center field his first time. 
And what would be not necessarily predicting it would happen that way, but what would be a, a logical place if if Major League Baseball would expand? And, and one school of thought is in the New York area. You've mm -hmm. got 16 million people there. They right. could handle a third team, say, right. in New Jersey or somewhere. And another would be Mexico City. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine a major league team in Mexico City with what do they have? They're, they're 12, 13 million, yeah, 15 something. million? Yeah. Plus the whole country of Mexico, right. then that would be their team. The only problem with that, though, is how about that travel down to Mexico City? That ball driven down the right field line, racing over his hairston. He can't get it. Falls in and goes behind him. Henley around first to second. He's headed for third with a triple. Hairston, that's a couple plays in right field on which he's had some difficulty. Starts with an error when he was unable to make the catch on Blank's uh, foul fly. And watch him here. Good approach again. That's a changeup. And off the end of the bat and on the bounce. Well, the ball checks up on Scott Hairston on that first bounce. And luckily for Nick Hundley, the play, he's watching it the whole way. No need to look at Glenn Hoffman there. He knows he can make it to third base. That's a good way to start off this fourth inning. Brings up Cunningham and the ball inside. That's Hunley's second triple of the season. Cunningham a good cut. One and one. Aaron. Out on a good, good play by the second baseman Justin Turner who ranged far to his right behind second base to throw Cunningham out in the first inning. That was after the Padres had scored two runs on four hits. This one sliced to Harrison tagging as Hundley. Harrison with a catch. Here comes Hundley and the Padres get a run back. Cunningham's fifth RBI of the year. Three to one. A yeah, nice easy fly ball or a game of pepper with that infield playing back and AC does an extremely good job of getting that ball to the outfield to score Nick Hundley. Nicely done. Alberto Gonzalez fly to center is only at bat. Dick getting back to your point regarding Mexico City. Oh pitchers would just be shaking in their boots. It's above 7,000 feet yeah, there in Mexico City. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to make the foul lines about 370. Exactly. And the power alley is 425 yeah. and center field 460. Mm -hmm. And the outfielders would have to wear track shoes. Have starting blocks out there. Covering that ground. Chop back to Nice. And an easy 1-3 put out for the second out. Lupke will be the batter. <laughs> Well, originally in the original eight in modern baseball, eight American and eight National League teams, there were two in St. Louis. That's right, the Browns and the, the Redbirds, that's right. And two in Philadelphia, the A's mm -hmm. and the Phillies. Base hit to center field by Lukey. His fourth hit of the season. The Padres with eight hits off Nice. They lead a three to one. And Lukey joins the parade. Here's Maven. He's without a hit. Well, after the one to three play off the bat of Alberto Gonzalez, looked like Nice was visibly upset with himself. I don't know if that had anything to do with uh, making that pitch uh, a good pitch, too good of a pitch for, for Lukey, but he is back in the stretch and it's the top of the order for San Diego. Maven grounded to short and was. Robbed by right at third diving. Behind the bag to take a hit away from him the last time. So two for Forsyth and two for Hundley. Guzman blanks Hudson and Lukey with hits. Three eight and, and oh for San Diego one run two hits and an error for the Mets. Popped up. 
shallow and right. Here comes Hairston. Out goes Turner, and Hairston makes the play. Padres get the run back on a triple by Hundley and a sacrifice fly Cunningham. And after four, San Diego leads it three to one. Big Game Recap brought to you by Murray Lampert Construction. Find the truth in home remodeling, folks, with Murray Lampert Construction. See why they are the company that you can trust. Visit MurrayLampert.com. Dick? All right, Mark. Uh, Padres and top to bottom. Uh, still a glow after the highly successful day yesterday, signing key players in the amateur draft, the pipeline that Hoyer is trying to build in the organization, signing 26 of their top 27. The only miss was the number four pick, Brett Austin, catcher from Charlotte, wanted to go to North Carolina State in his home state, and uh, the Padres will get a compensatory pick for that next year. So well done, 26 of the top 27, and uh, one of those signees threw out the opening pitch tonight. Michael Kelly. Here, and they'll all come to uh, Petco, be checked out this week, and then be assigned to the Rookie League or Arizona. Pagan has walked and struck out. One and one. Well, what an exciting time for those signees, huh? And those kids getting their professional career underway. Good for them. Jeff Moore had the Padres dug deep into the saddlebags. Mm -hmm. Soft liner right at Hudson for the out. Now here is the ceremonial first pitch. A look at uh, this 18 year old from Boca Raton Florida <laughs> throws a little fader up there. He's 6 5 throws a fastball up to 94. Interesting Matt Latos was his catcher Latos from Fort Lauderdale and Kelly from Boca Raton. Why ball jumps out of his hand huh. I like that little turn over the rubber a little power position here. Here we slow it down. Watch that leg kick and show him the backside. Show him a little bit of the number and then drive. Good arm swing out of the glove. Fluid motion. Nice. Who's he remind you of? Oh, gosh. You know what? His delivery did kind of. I'm going to have to think about it. Does he yeah. remind you mind him of somebody? I think he does have a delivery at that upright position. The hopper on one big bounce to Gonzalez. He gets it across for the second out. Turner. Is 0 for 3. I was thinking Mark Pryor. You know that's not a bad uh, drive to the plate, high knee kick. That's not a bad call, Dick. 
especially with the way the ball exploded out of his hand. But well, we wish him well as part of the Padre family, and we too are excited about the list of talent that has been accumulated in the June draft. Plus, those uh, involved in trades for Ludwig uh, will still get a player from Pittsburgh. Of course, the Adrian Gonzalez trade. The Mike Adams bringing two young pitchers uh, into the organization. So, lot to look forward to. Two and zero to right. David has walked and struck out. Took a third strike the last time up, and as one of our all-time favorites, Ernie Harwell, would have said, he's out for excessive window shopping. <laughs> I've never heard that yeah, one. That's yeah, good. that was one of his favorites. Fly balls, shallow and right. That's going to fall, and Hudson can't get there. Good effort by Hudson, but the bloop single by David Wright with two outs here in the fifth. Yeah, he was looking for the highlight reel. Well, that was a good effort. Kind of like a receiver trying to catch a football into the end zone, yes, right? Kind of timed it perfectly. A good call. That quarterback just threw it a little yeah. too long. Brings up Lucas Duda, lined out to left and was hit by a pitch. And that became the Mets run in the fourth inning. He was forced. By Hairston, but Hairston then came around eventually on Tejada's double that hit the third base bag. Guzman had to lean into foul territory. That moved his way offline. Hudson playing. Three steps out on the outfield grass at second. And a modest shift with Gonzalez over on the second base side. As he shifts from shortstop. Now he's moved back a couple of steps on the shortstop side. Of second. Three hits last night for Duda including a long home run. Runner goes and they got him picked off. Guzman to second. Gonzalez runs him back and tags him out. Good move. Lukey picks off right and the inning is over. We're at the halfway mark at this one at Petco Park in San Diego. The Padres three and the Mets one.
Presented by Harris Rincon Casino. The jackpot is climbing. If a grand slam has hit this inning, $52,500 could be yours. Enter at 4SD.com. Well, the Padres need to get those bases drunk so they have a chance. <laughs> Logan Forsythe, a double and a single, two for two, and a run scored tonight. And another one aimed toward left. Tejada, long throw, and he gets him. He's got a strong arm out there at shortstop. Brings up Guzman. One for two. Looped the single to left center field his last time. Hitting safely 14 of 15 games. And hitting right at the 400 mark with 14 RBIs in this stretch. Off speed strike, a changeup. Misses one and one. Yeah, make him work a little bit after that uh, quick out by Logan Forsythe. Get your pitch, work the count in your favor. Lanks on deck. Good tailing fastball there on that, huh? Good action, one and two. Check out the action on this two seam sinker away. Got him looking. That's twice he has been caught looking for strike three. Let's see what Happy Star has to say about this. Carlos Jr. says yes. Just on the outside corner. And that's all it takes. Painted it. So two gone to Kyle Blanks and infield hit and scored in the first and lined out to center field in the third. Ground ball into left field for a base hit. Well, Blanks with two hits tonight and that's nine now for the Padres. So they continue the good hitting that we saw on the 10 game road trip. They had 10 hits last night. Nine already tonight. Logan Forsythe being aggressive, first pitch. And Kyle Blanks, look out! Get back on those rails. You don't want to derail going down to first base there, 88 train. And he's also aggressive. First pitch hacking. Hudson grounded into a 6 3 double play. And then back in the first inning, singled in the first run of the game. One game in New York, he hit the, in the cleanup spot. First time in a 10 year career, he was placed in the fourth spot. Now the Padres leading the Matrix in stolen bases, but uh, nothing tonight. Nice is one of the best in holding runners. That's right at the second baseman, Turner. And the inning is over. No runs a hit. The Padres leave their fifth man after five at Petco. 3 1 for the home side.
Leaderboard tonight is brought to you by Los Primos, home of the Monster Burrito. Get your $5 meal deal. Now, most base hits, and this is an interesting graphic. Look at the teams. The Mets are the only invader. All the rest are National League Central Division teams. The Cardinals, Cubs, Astros, surprisingly, mm -hmm. on that list. And the Reds, but the Mets right there, second place. The Padres, by the way, in case you're wondering, with their nine hits tonight, are at 9.99. Well, you know, I also look at that list. Look, scratching the Mets off that list. Pop fly, first ball hunting, Duda. And Forsyth in foul territory with a grab. You know, as, as you mentioned, Dick, those teams in the NL Central, but those ballparks, I mean, those are hitter-friendly ballparks. As you take a look at uh, Bush Stadium, Wrigley, Minute Maid, and Great American. But Sometimes the Mets isn't. The Mets, that's a ballpark that exactly. is more a pitcher's yeah, park. You're absolutely right. And testimony that this is just a good hitting team. Mm -hmm. And without Beltron and without Reyes. Right. And Daniel Murphy, you know, all big hitters. And yet they bring up uh, Duda and rookies like uh, Tejado, who's at the RBI tonight. Turner at second base. Day. And the count is one and two. Jason has struck out and fly to right. Well, tomorrow day game, 335. No TV here on Channel 4, San Diego. We invite you to follow the action on 1090 radio. Matt Latos against Dylan G, the rookie who has a 10 uh, win season going for the Mets. Latos has pitched very well of late to his best pitching of the season the last few starts. Everybody has their favorite spot in the dugout. Matt Latos is always perched in that spot down towards the first base side by that camera well. Got to be ready to duck though. You're not mm -hmm. protected by the screen. Full count to Bay. He fouls it high into the top tier. 93 the pitch count now for Lupke. High fly ball, right center. Cunningham. Two away. Scott Hairston has popped a second and ripped one to third. Fine play made by Lukey. They couldn't turn the double play, and Hairston then eventually came around on Paulino single, and Tejada's double that hit the third base bag. Anthony Bass, who has been uh, a frequent bullpen pitcher for the Padres of late, getting loose. Corey's still making good pitches. He's good for about 110 pitches. That would be 95 that we just saw, the Hairston. The you know, pitch count is one thing, and how the hitters are reacting to the fastball this late in the game is another. Writes that one inside. One and one to Hairston. So his brother Jerry has gone from Washington. That ball is drilled to right field. Way out there is Cunningham, and he's got room, and Scott Hairston knows that ball might be a home run in a lot of parts, but not at Petco. No, sir. A long out to right, a one, two, three inning for Lukey. It's still three to one.
night fireworks and uh, the Hall of Famer Tony Hawk is going to throw out the first pitch and for the first 5,000 of you who purchase your tickets at Padres.com slash Tony Hawk you'll get a free collector's edition of the Tony Hawk bobblehead doll it's a good one stay after the game and catch another Friday night fireworks show visit Padres.com slash Tony Hawk to buy your tickets one pitch one out as Nick Hundley is gone Hey, Carlsbad's own Tony Hawk with the to uh, Torrey Pines High School and a nine time gold medal winner in the Summer X Games. And he also, not only is it a quality item, Mr. Enberg, he also preaches safety. Elbow pads, knee pads, helmet. Kids, be smart, have yep. fun. Yep. He's the best. Yeah, one of our son's favorite buddies uh, didn't wear a helmet and uh, mm -hmm. he's lucky to still be with us. Mm -hmm. He was in a coma for Ooh, three months. Yeah. It's even a he even autographed on the back side of it. Yeah, that's really yeah, it's an impression nice. of the uh, autograph of Tony Hawk. Cunningham. Out on a good play made by second baseman Turner and his sacrifice fly. Got Hundley home after Hundley had tripled in the fourth inning. Slow curve bends into the strike zone. One and two to Cunningham. That ball hit well to left field, but uh, chasing it down is Jason Bay. And the park is playing big tonight. Well, it just could not get extended on that pitch, Aaron Cunningham. And one of the pitches of the evening for Nice, as you take a look at the breakdown, is burying that. Fastball into the righties like Corey Luke with that slider down it in the fastball and he's doing the same thing. Alberto well, Gonzalez. Both uh, pitchers pitching very well. Three runs nine hits for the Padres one run three hits for New York. Gonzalez is fly to center and bounce to the mound. Jason Bartlett given this night off at least as a starter. Nice will bat third in the top of the seventh. This could be his last inning. That last pitch as a pitcher gets up in pitch count that was only 83 but he kind of telegraphed that one because he slowed down his motion on the changeup. You can see him kind of working under it a little bit and he slowed down the arm, the arm action and hitters can pick up on that. Another off speed pitch for a ball at 74. Now I think he has set him up nicely for a fastball on the inner half of the plate. Think about it. Change up right and then that curveball. Soft, soft. Let's see if he tries to buzz one in on him. All right, chopper off home plate. This is going to be a tough play for Tejada. And he doesn't get him. Head first slide. Gonzalez is safe. The 1,000th hit of this San Diego Padres season by Alberto Gonzalez. Tenth hit of the night off Nice. That's a helpless feeling, although Tejada made it close. Yep. And you know what? I, I just get upset because I'm concerned about the safety and the well-being of the Padre base runner. Why do guys slide into first base? They, I mean, they just want a base hit. That's why. It, 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 you know, it slows you down. It. it you know, you could jam a finger, an elbow, a shoulder. There's so many ways of getting hurt. Well, luckily for Alberto Gonzalez, he is safe in the first base, and he is safe on the health side as well, diving into first base. James Darnell will pinch hit for Lupke. Four for 17 in his uh, brief time up here in the big leagues. And he takes ball one. Pretty good looking curveball. Well, Luke, he goes six innings. And uh, closing in on the 100 pitch mark. This night is through. Chop toward third. Right charges. That underhand flip in plenty of time. Makes it look easy. A hit for the Padres on Gonzalez. Scratch hit on the infield. But he's left, and we're six innings into a 3 1.
as we remind you that Padres Baseball brought to you by Permadontic, Southern California's premier dental implant center. By MTS, MTS moves me. And by Cadillac, visit your San Diego County Cadillac dealer for an attractive lease or purchase offer. With Mark Grant, Dick Enberg, pleased you've joined us here from Petco Park and Chad Qualls enters the game here in the seventh inning. Lukey's night is through. The numbers for Qualls, six and six with a 3.81 ERA. 266 batting average against Lupke's card six innings one run earned three hits three walks and a hit batter and five strikeouts a solid from the young left hander Lupke absolutely and he ran into a little bit of trouble in that first inning with two walks and worked out of it nicely another walk in the second and then the hit batsman that when, when Duda came up to that's the last thing that Corey wanted to do he came around to score and that's the only run a fine job tonight by the young left hander. He's put together three big league emphasis big league starts. Mm -hmm. And if Orlando Hudson found the handle in that turn, who knows that double play, right? Exactly right. Gave up just uh, two runs on three hits in New York, and now one run on three hits tonight. And if I would have studied a little harder in high school, I probably would have been an A student. <laughs> I <laughs> bet you were a good student. Average, average well, at best. Polino, one for two tonight. By the mound, Gonzalez, 6 3 put out. Let me guess, your favorite subject in school? Recess? <laughs> Actually, lunch. lunch. But seriously, you know my favorite? Yeah, lunch? what was Spanish. It? Oh. Had a great teacher, Mr. Phil Keating. Very organized, set in his ways, very regimented. Mm -hmm. uh, was fair, but very uh, stern. And he wanted us to learn. And I took to that. And it was my favorite subject. And that pulled was straight a, A's in Spanish. And that was a blessing for you as a baseball player. Mm -hmm. you know, exactly. Like encountering the Spanish-speaking mm -hmm. players. I love the Spanish language. I love the, the, uh, just the whole thing about it. Love Mexico. I love winter ball. Puerto Rico. Would love to go to Spain someday. I love the culture. I think it's a beautiful language. Wish I was fluent in it. Tejada takes a strike. One and one. In fact, if you could choose, I, I pose this question all the time. If you could choose to where you could pick up an instrument and just play it flawlessly or speak a language, what would you choose? French. Really? To speak the language of yes. French? Right, nice. Luke Gregerson gets ready behind Qualls. Two on one. Mike Baxter, left handed hitter, former Padre, is on deck. And Pedro Beato is warming up in the Mets bullpen down the right field line. Three and one. So like Chad Qualls has that turbo sinker working, even though that one missed up and out of the zone, had some tremendous movement to it. So what does that tell you? If he keeps that right around the knees, it's going to have tremendous action. It's going to be tough to square up for these Met hitters. There it is. You know, Dick, you made a good point the other night. You throw the ball when you have the movement like Qualls, throw the ball to the heart of the plate and let the ball do the work. Yeah. You start nibbling and it's going to be off the plate when it gets there. So the count goes full. One out to Hada. Padres lead by two, three to one. Smothered foul. We had a nice discussion uh, with Tony Gwynn on the road trip about that. And, and he was sharing, you know, information from Goose Gossage and others that, you know, single ball pitchers more than. Those that don't sink the ball have a lot of foul balls like this. Mm -hmm. You yep. know, hitters will stay alive. The foul ball, foul ball, and, you, and, and unless you're strong of mind, you might leave your best pitch. Ground ball up the middle by Hudson into center field. So Tejada has his second hit tonight. One out single brings up Baxter. 
Baxter who fractured his thumb in spring training trying to make a diving catch in the outfield and was on the 60 day disabled and recovered and then the Padres in a player move did not include him on the 40 man roster so he was out there available and the Mets quickly grabbed him he grew up just a 10 minute ride from the ballpark in Queens he, mom and dad still live in the same house a three bedroom house in Queens so it was quite a thrill for him to come up and he got a big hit helped uh, the Mets to beat the Padres four for 11 as you saw with a double and a triple in those four hits. One and one on a slider. You know, it'd be like you living in a near Wrigley Field or Comiskey Park, sure. winding up pitching for that team. Dream come true. Ground ball up the middle. Hudson will do it himself. 4 3 on the double play. And that's it for the top of the seventh inning. No runs a hit. No one left. Stretch half of the seventh in San Diego with the Padres in front. Three to one. of the seventh and we go beyond the box score brought to you by discount tire where America saves on tires Brewers edge the Dodgers two to one Mark Kotze a walk off single in the ninth inning for the Brewers Marlins hang on in Colorado a 6 5 win so with Arizona getting two in the ninth at Philadelphia three two win there and San Francisco losing in Atlanta late two one in extra innings Arizona is the only National League West team with a win tonight so they're gaining ground on all the closest pursuers the Padres trying to be the other NL West team to win tonight. Pedro Beato is the pitcher. Cameron Maven leading off tonight two ground outs and a fly ball to right. He takes ball one. Ball that he hit in the second inning was a smash. Down the line at third and Wright made a fantastic play to throw him out. Opponent, opponent's batting average only 212, but the walks are up from Beato. Fastball curve, slider, and a change. Low to mid 90s on the fastball, always working from the stretch. Punch foul, and it's two and one.
three and one. Piato, young right hander, he's just 24 from the Dominican. This is his first year in the big leagues. Good cut by Maven, but a fastball by him. Another good cut. I can see where at bats against Beato can, can fall under the uncomfortable category. He's got a live arm. Not really sure all the time where that fastball is going to be going. So as a hitter, you know, you really can't. You know, there are comfortable at bats where guys are always around the plate, right? This guy might be a different story. That ball is hit well to left field. Back goes B. And touch them all, Maven. Touch them all. That was a rocket number eight for Cameron Maven. Four to one, San Diego. Nothing uncomfortable about that at bat or that swing from Cameron Maven. He worked the count full. It's a fastball middle in. And watch the hands. Get him through there. Get that fat part of the shillelagh on that ball and send it out. There. Second tank for Cameron Maven. The Padres leader in home runs with eight since Ryan Ludwig has been traded. It's nine o'clock. It's rush hour for Cameron Maven right about now. Trying to become only the fourth Padre in history with 30 steals and 10 home runs. Meets. He's got uh, the steal mark with 31. And needs two more dingers to mm -hmm. join a select San Diego company. Well, well, ball foul. You know, when you look at where that pitch was thrown and, and the power he put into that, getting his hands, this ball is up, it's in. I mean, it, you know, it's belt buckle high, but it's on the inner half. He gets his hand, watch his hands. Get him through, get him out there, and get that good part of the bat. That's, that's a pretty good ride on that pitch it now. It really was. Because his hands weren't really extended, you know? Well, no, I think the feeling by... Randy Reddy, the batting coach, and uh, Bud Black is that Maven, as he, he's just 24, mm -hmm. got that long, lean body as he, you know, he grows into it. Right. That he's going to be, he could be a 20 home run hitter. You know, the majority of the time when you see guys connect on a home run, what are the arms? The arms are fully extended, right? Right. Maven's hands were in near his chest. This goes to show you the uh, the bat speed he put on that pitch. Forsyth into right center field, a long run, but there is Scott Hart Hairston for the out. A one away here in the seventh inning, four to one Padres, and the batter is Jesus Guzman, one for two. That went back toward us. Mm, not tonight. Going back to Maven, 30 steals and 10 home runs. The only other Padres in history to accomplish that. Tony Gwynn in 86, Steve Finley 95, and Reggie Sanders in 99. Speed and power. Rip to third and by the dive of right. Guzman has a, a, the base hit, and it's going to be a double as he cruises into second base. He just is flat out a good hitter. You know how they say that when you do things and you want to be productive, you should never cut corners, right? Do it the right way. Yes. You talk about Guzman cutting corners on the bases. I was watching him as that ball went by third base. 
he cut the corner at first base. I'm not saying a 90, you know, 90 degree angle, but he cut it shortly to get to second base on that. Not a big looping turn around first base. Well, he's playing it place in front of him so if the left fielder has any mm -hmm. trouble at all Bay then he can uh, perhaps go all the way to third. So one out double after Maven started the inning with a home run off the auto and Kyle Blanks with a big cut. Blanks has a couple of hits. Hangs inside. Well, the Padres uh, got off to a slow start, especially with the bat. They just had such difficulty scoring runs. And our comparison brought to you by the San Diego Toyota dealers. We've got what it takes. Look at April 27 games, 77 runs. August 14 games, 79 runs. Randy Reddy, the hitting coach, patient teacher. And the young kids are coming through. They're producing runs. Getting a chance to show their stuff. Not only impress the coaching staff, but you know what? Impressing your teammates as well. Young kids coming up. You know, they've seen these guys playing the big leagues for a long time. Guys like Nick Conley, Will Venable. They become friends with them. Ground ball out in front of the plate, and Polino throws out blanks for the second out. Holding it second is Guzman. Brings up Orlando Hudson. So everyone in the lineup tonight has a base hit, including Luke, the starting pitcher, except Aaron Cunningham, and he drove in the runs with a sacrifice fly. Dozen hits for San Diego. There were four runs and ten hits last night, four runs, twelve hits this evening. Hudson drove in the first run of the game in the first inning. Forsyth had doubled and then with two out blank safe on an infield hit. Hudson brought in Forsyth with a single to right and Hundley single to center to make it 2 nothing. That ball driven to center field. Here comes Guzman. Here's the throw to the plate and he is out of there. Oh, I thought the umpire gave him the out call. He, he punched him. I thought, yes, call safe. He got his hand on the plate. I thought he was safe. The throw was a little bit to the first base side, and that allowed Guzman to come in the back door. And I was watching as Guzman was going around third base. Glenn Hoffman was waving him. And you can see clearly in the umpire, look at, okay, he pointed at him first, oh. and then he signaled safe, oh, indicating, he, yep, saying, yep, he got his hand in there. Jerry Davis says, yes, he got it. And score him, he is safe. But you know what, Dick, going back another 90 feet, Glenn Hoffman was waving him, and then it looked like he kind of wanted to hold him up. Runner goes, throw through to second base, and he's out. Hudson thrown out stealing, but the Padres got a couple of runs here in the seventh inning on... The home run by Cameron Maven into the second deck is eighth of the year. Then a double Guzman and a single Hudson for a 5-1 lead.
Wednesday is officially, as Andy Ashby, the former right-hander, would say, free and easy. Free and easy at the Del Mar Racetrack. Diamond Club <laughs> members enjoy free stretch run admission, free reserved seating, and a free program. Plus, enjoy half-price domestic draft beers, beers, sodas, and hot dogs at select concessions. You can't beat that. Del Mar, is it where the surf meets the turf? Yeah, and no way. Wednesday's tomorrow. That's manana. Yeah, yeah, that's so tomorrow. Free and easy. That's the time to go to Del Mar tomorrow. You could go, get there for the daily double, and come over here to Petco Perfect. and catch a ball game. Luke Gregerson will work the eighth inning. Luke's numbers on the year, three and three out of the pen. 2.93 ERA. Qualls goes an inning. No runs, gave up a hit. Double play took care of that. Will Venable enters the game. Right field and Cunningham moves from right field to left field with Carol Blanks taken out. Defensive uh, moves by Bud Black. So the outfield is Cunningham left, made in center, Venable right. Top of the eighth, top of the order, Pagan. He needs a hit to extend his streak. He's hit safely in nine straight. Walk struck out line to second tonight. And how sweet is that crooked number in the bottom of the seventh stanza for San Diego to make it 5-1. Smothered foul at the plate. The attendance tonight at Petco, 24,212. 30,000 last night. A good turnout on two for one Tuesday night. Big game tomorrow, 335. Matt Latos and Dylan G to complete the three game series. And the Marlins in for four. High pop up. Hudson calling right in the baseline. So unless the Mets rally, Pagan's nine-game hitting streak is going to come to an end. Justin Turner, 0 for 3. Crushed one the first time up to deep center field, but a 390-foot out. And he has grounded up the second and short since. Interesting uh, in the news about those number one draft picks signed, and most of them finally did sign contracts at the bewitching hour in the final minutes last night. Did you notice where the number one draft pick of the Mets, an outfielder, where he committed I, for where, college? I did. Well, where he was from. You know, you, you just, when you think of number one draft picks, you think California, right. Florida, Texas. Cheyenne, Wyoming. Yeah. And he committed to San Diego State, correct? Yep. No, no, not that one. Oh, okay. There's another that they ah, signed. That's right. That was their third round pick, I believe. Cheyenne, huh? Round ball to third. Forsyth fires the first for the out. Two away. Yeah, his name. Uh, Nemo. Brandon Nemo or Nimmo, M N I M M O. So they found Nemo in Cheyenne. That's right. It's Kurt Gowdy country. <laughs> Is that where Kurt was from? Yeah, he's a cowboy from yeah. Wyoming. Yeah. Maybe Laramie. Yeah. I love Jackson Hole. Oh yeah. Two outs to David Wright. A walk, a bloop single, and a strikeout. So this situation here with the four run lead, this is where Luke Gregerson can be very aggressive and just go right after David Wright. I'm not saying lay it up there on a tee, but 
pound the strike zone if he hits a solo shot eight. Still in good shape. Avoid the watch at this point late in the game. I'm going to sneak a recorder down there. What do you think, Dick? Between <laughs> Buddy and Darren, and see what uh, they talk about during the game. I bet it'd be fascinating. Yeah. I, you know what? I say this all the time. Buddy Black and Darren Balsley. It, it might not be every day, but I pick up a little bit of something from each guy from a managerial standpoint and a pitching coach standpoint. Quite a bit talking to those guys. Fly ball center field. Routine for Maven as he cruises into right center. Luke Gregerson. Three up, three down. The Mets go in the eighth inning. Home half the eighth. It'll be Hundley, Cunningham, and Gonzalez with the Padres up by four. you by Mossy Ford and Mossy Toyota. Visit us in Pacific Beach or online at Mossy.com. Well, a surprise entry here in the bottom of the eighth inning on the mound. Mike Pelfrey, a starter. He has uh, pitched in relief in one game out of 25 this year. Last outing for Pelfrey, he started one of the games Padres were in New York. And then the next start, he was hit in the elbow by a comebacker and only had four innings of work. So here's a chance for him to get in an mm -hmm. inning in between starts. Yeah, I did a little homework, went across to the Mets TV booth and talked to former right hander Ron Darling, and he said just that. And today would be his pen day, his work day. So you figure you'd throw him out there against some live action because he didn't have quite the workload he would hope to have in Arizona. There's Ronnie on the left. Former uh, right hander out of Yale University. And Gary Cohen, one of the best. I, I, I really like the way Gary calls the ball game, and I think he does a good job. Look really, very relaxed, don't they? They're not up there like we're, we we yeah. do games we're oh, on our yeah. toes. We're, Absolutely. We're leaning forward. You've got to be ready to charge those mm -hmm. line drives. Second time this year and the fourth time overall that Pelfrey has worked in relief in the big leagues. Hundley lines that one to right field. Hairston racing into the corner. Can't get it. Caroms off the wall and Hundley might try for a second triple. Here he goes on his way to third. He's got another. What a night for Nick Hundley. An RBI single and a pair of triples to right field. Going the opposite way nicely. We've seen Nick Hundley do that lately. Last night, he punched one to right field. 
in the 10th inning to get aboard with a single. And that's one of those triples to where, again, no help from Glenn Hoffman needed. He saw that play. That ball came away from Scott Harrison. Lighten up the base pass for Nick Hundley. Cunningham, who was presented the same opportunity in the fourth inning, Hundley led off with a triple, and he delivered a sacrifice fly to right to drive in his fifth run of the year. The only Padre in a 14-hit attack tonight without a hit is Cunningham. And the infield tight hitter's delight for him. Popped him up. That's a long run for the second baseman called off by Hairston with the infield in. Turner had a long way to go and Hairston with the ball hit that high able to come in and make the catch. So one out. Alberto Gonzalez with the chance to drive in the run. He has an infield hit. Remember he chopped one off home plate and beat it out. In the sixth inning. So Henley leading this 14 hit attack with a single and two triples. Forsyth with a pair, Guzman with a brace of hits, Blanks with two, Gonzalez, Lupke the starter, and Maven also with base hits, and Maven a home run is eighth. Oh Eric Cameron, it's a new angle for us down in the bullpen. Mm -hmm. Watch the movement on this pitch. Yeah, slider down and away. Ground ball right side and through. It's six to one as Henley comes in. Gonzalez delivers. His 26th RBI of the year for Alberto. Good approaches this inning by the San Diego Padre hitters. Nick Henley going the opposite way. Gonzalez realizing, like you said, right? The infield is in. It cuts down to range. Let's watch the swing. He just stays on the top half of that baseball, hits down on it, chops on it. Nicely done, Alberto. Kerry Collins, uh, after watching Pelfrey face three batters, gives up a triple and a single and a run. And so we'll have a change for the Mets. And this pitching change is brought to you by the Law Tigers, San Diego's motorcycle injury lawyers who ride. Tim Burke. That's his profile brought to you by the RCP Block and Brick Company. Create a pathway through your garden with easy to install stepping stones. Comes pastoral, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Burdick, one out. Gonzalez with the RBI single at first base and Venable batting for the first time. Came in as a defensive replacement. Venable last night had a key. Home run with a man on that pulled the Padres to 4-3, and then he singled again in the ninth inning. Yoda's all excited. He's got that little smirk on his face. 
Yeah, I think somebody ought to slap him around a little bit. You know? <laughs> hey, come on, smile. Yeah, the Padres six runs on 15 hits tonight. And uh, if you're a long-standing Padre fan, I got some trivia for you that's going to test you. Now there'll be some fans out there who'll know the answer. Hundley with two triples tonight is only the second catcher in history to come up with two triples in a single game. Mm. How many out there can come up with the answer as to the other? You've got to go back. 1973. Two and two to Venable. Struck him out. Throw to first. And he's back just in time. A two way, and Maven will be the batter, and Collins back out to the mound. Fred Kendall was the other. Ah. 1973 against Philadelphia. At Philadelphia, Kendall had a pair of triples. In a single game. Well, Terry Collins making pitching moves here as if the game was tied, not six to one. What the Tony LaRusse is going on here? That's right. DJ Carrasco is the new hurler with two outs in the eighth. In on a triple by Hundley and Gonzalez single and Maven the batter Carrasco the pitcher third man used by Collins here in the eighth inning. Well all these pitching changes make you want to have a Tom Collins. <laughs> yeah he's uh, extending the length of this game mm -hmm. I guess he's got nothing going on tonight. Maven he put a Punch on one the last time up into the second deck in left field is eighth home run of the year. And denied another hit on the play defensive play of the game by David Wright at third base diving to the line to backhand his shot aimed for the left field corner to throw him out. That was uh, back in the second inning. Lays off the fastball two and one. You know how much I love a homemade sign. Nicely done, kids. Love that homemade sign. Great colors. A lot of hard work into that. Way to go. And some young faces there. Yeah. Easy play for Carrasco, and the inning is over. Padres add a run on Hundley's triple and Gonzalez single, and we go to the ninth inning. San Diego with a five run lead.
brought to you by the summer's best event from Cadillac. Get exceptional offers on the entire Cadillac lineup, including the versatile SRX crossover. Visit your San Diego Cadillac dealer tomorrow. And then come on out to Petco Park for a 335 game final of this three game series with the Mets. Latos against G. Eric Hamron out of the pen to make his sixth appearance since being called up. He's had a couple of good outings. We're contending in two thirds. No hits last night. Did hit a batter. And uh, in Cincinnati on Saturday, two hitless innings and struck out four. It is so nice to look up at that scoreboard and see the six runs and the 15 hits. Padres pitchers have limited the Mets to one run and only four knocks this evening. Lupke giving up the one run on three hits. Hit batsman leading off the fourth inning. Became uh, the only Mets run, and this is the man who was hit, Duda, leading off. Lined out, hit by a pitch, and fouled out. Two and zero. Oh. Bay and then Scott Hairston to hit top of the ninth. Got a fire strikes here. No free passes. Two and one. Three balls and a strike to the leadoff hitter Duda. You know you had that Cadillac reader you just read. Yeah. If I may can I just say something. You can always say something. For my 50th birthday you know what my wife said I could get. Three and two. 50th birthday in 2013. I want a 1963 the year I was born. Cadillac two door convertible. Oh sweet. Red with a white top. I like it. How sweet would that be? Oh I could just see it. That big old boat pulling oh. into the ball yard. Oh. And I want to get the horn in the movie Caddyshack when Rodney pulls up in his car. That's the horn I want on my Cadillac. Is that the one you, you put up on the front fender? No, just a regular, just oh, a regular, just a regular horn. horn. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Three and two to Duda. And he fouls it into the glove of Hundley, strike three. Stay tuned, folks, for the Saquon Casino Post Game Show. John Weisbarth and Bob Scanlon in our Channel 4 studio. Saquon Casino, get away for the day at Saquon Casino. What's your dream car, Professor? You know, I've never really been big into automotives. I, uh, I worked on the assembly line in Detroit. High fly ball off the bat of Bay and shallow and right is Venable for the second out. Bay has flied three times to right field. I was uh, in the 1953 Dodgers. I don't know if you would think back that far, but they had huge front huge, bumpers. Huge front bumpers. I was one of a three man crew that put those really? front bumpers on the assembly line on those Dodgers. I know all over the country if they're left, you know, people put on the brakes and stop and the bumper falls <laughs> off. But that was a lifetime experience working. I'll bet. I had to leave college. I didn't have enough money after my sophomore year. And I worked in the assembly line, the Dodge plant in wow. Hamtramck, Michigan. It's the first time I ever heard a woman swear. <laughs> <laughs> but so, a good life experience for y'all. Oh, bet. you think I didn't get back to central Michigan in a hurry when, yeah. when that... Uh, Four months ended. I mean, not that I didn't appreciate my college education. I love being in school, but after working a real job. Sure. My dad was just one or two positions on. He put the carburetors in on top. And, of course, we worked down in the pits to put yeah. that bumper on. That's awesome. The old guys taught me how you can take a nap in 20 minutes because <laughs> you get 20 minutes off every of that. One and one to Harrison. Down to the final out of the Mets. 
And obviously down to the final pieces of ad libs for Enberg and Grant here in the ninth <laughs> inning. We're digging deep, folks. <laughs> Two and one to Harrison, and that misses. Scott has popped up, hit a shot to third that Forsythe made a nice play on to throw to second for Fuller's choice, and a long out to right field. Really hit it the last time. And this one is at Forsythe who hops the throw across, and the Padres win it, six to one. A 15 hit attack led by catcher Nick Hundley. And the Padres have squared this series with a 6 to 1 victory here at Petco Park tonight. And we'll be back with a final look at the numbers tonight. Handsome numbers in that hit column. 15 big ones for San Diego.